unplugged dog genes. The next bit of information will be associated with the word dog and represents the second piece of our big three puzzle. Experimental psychologists are a wonderful breed, pun intended. It is through their laborious efforts that we can learn quite a bit. You may not agree with their methods, and most animal lovers won't, but at least we can take advantage of their findings. In the following example, we uncover a very important part of the big three. Some years ago, a research team built a large dog-sized maze. A metal screen was attached to the floor so that an electric current could be sent as a shock throughout the surface of the floor, and the next ingredient for this experiment was a dog. The researchers placed the dog at the beginning of the maze and proceeded to give it an electric shock through its paws, and needless to say, in response to this jolt, the pooch hightailed it through the maze, running away from where the area was where it was shocked. Over and over and over, the scientists proved to themselves that when a dog is placed at one end of a maze and given an electric shot, it will, in fact, run through the maze to get away from the shot. Seems reasonable on the canine's part. I mean, I do the same thing, too. But what had been established was that when a dog is made uncomfortable by shocking its paws with electricity, it will run away from the place it was shocked in order to find a safer place to reside where it won't get shocked anymore. Pretty basic, huh? I mean, you know, stimuli, response. The next part of the experiment is really quite awful, and I must share it with you in order to make a very important point. Mm -hmm. Please forgive me for the ensuing imagery, yet I hope it sticks in your mind forever and provides you with an understanding of one of our predicaments as humans. What the scientists, the scientists did next is they placed the dog, oh no, excuse me, the, but I skipped it there. What the scientists did next was pretty gross. They took our little doggy and put him in a harness. Essentially, the harness was like a straitjacket and made it impossible for the dog to move. After our doggy was rendered immobile, part two of the experiment began. They placed the dog back in the maze and proceeded to shock its little paws over and over again and again. They repeated the shock treatment. Each time the dog attempted to run, no matter how hard it tried to escape, the harness held it to its fate. Mm -hmm. After some time, the, the doggy just finally gave up. It just stood there, passively receiving the shocks. No matter how many times they shocked the pooch, it no longer even tried to do anything. It just stood there. The crucial findings associated with this cruelty came in the next phase of the experiment. The scientists removed the harness from the dog and once again placed it in the maze. Following the usual procedures, they pushed the button, shot the dog into their amazement. It just stood there. It didn't move. I mean, they repeated the program, shock after shock and shock, and the dog just stood there passively receiving this brutal treatment, although it was completely unbound, free to run and escape. It just stood there, attempting nothing. This experiment and the dog's reaction to it came to be known as the learned helplessness phenomenon. Although the dog previously had learned to run from the shock, after being harnessed and repeatedly failing to escape, it finally just gave up. Even after being removed from the restraint, the dog was resigned to its previous harnessed reality. It was completely free to run, yet it didn't. So that's it. That's the second part of the big three. The word dog represents all of that. The word dog represents the learned helplessness phenomenon. Now, let's continue on to the next piece of the puzzle. Unplugged dog dreams. Although the first two pieces of research and the images and knowledge they convey stand alone and are significant in and of themselves, the next bit of research and the sequence of thoughts thereafter complete the entire picture of the perspective of unplugged dog dreams. In the early 70s, researchers decided they wanted to study dreams. Or, more specifically, what effect dreams and their associated brainwave activities, activities had on our everyday lives. Earlier experiments in this field have proven that we, humans, dream every night. Although we may not remember them, our minds dream each and every night. Whether we like it or not, it, the mind, just does this thing. So scientists now want to know, why do we dream? What purpose do dreams serve? How do dreams affect us? What happens if we don't dream? And blah, 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 blah. The question really was, what the heck's going on in there and how the heck do we do this? 
You see, at that time in history, scientists didn't have all the modern sophisticated equipment that they have today. So to better understand the purpose of dreaming and what effect it has on our daily lives, the researchers decided they would study the dreamless mind. In order to do this, they had to design an experiment which would deprive humans of their dream state. By observing these dreamless minds, researchers hoped to find some difference in the waking mind so they could determine what role dreams played in the construction and development of our day-to-day -day lives. In short, how dreams affect our awake human life. <clears throat> Previously, science had determined that as we begin to dream, our eyes dart side to side very rapidly, and it's known as rapid eye movement, REMs. Most of us have heard of that. With this information, the researchers and their graduate students would attempt to monitor sleeping people and wake them when their eyes began to move. The experiment began. Our human subjects agreed to sleep in the lab and be awakened each and every time their REMs began. So there they were sleeping away, and soon after the researchers determined that the dream state had begun, they woke up the subjects, depriving them of their dream states. All night long, for many days, the sequence went like this. Sleep, REM, wake up. Sleep, REM, wake up. Sleep, REM, wake up. Ooh, nah, nah, nah. Soon after this experiment was started, it was terminated. The findings were alarming. In fact, the test was considered so dangerous and unethical that apparently no test like it has ever been conducted since. What did they find? They found that people, people just like you and me, people who are deprived of dreaming in their sleep become very disturbed. In fact, dream deprivation caused anxiety, irritability, frustration, and the subjects <clears throat> who experienced it all were very, very upset. All the subjects became uncomfortable with life. Some were contemplating suicide to end their despairs. Others became outwardly violent. All in all, when these people were not allowed to dream in their sleep, they became very unpleasant to be around. Since that time, science has advanced, and our understanding of the mind has increased enormously. We now can read brain wave activity and measure the precise wavelength of brain states. In fact, I heard of one article in a science magazine where researchers were actually weighing a thought. I mean, imagine it, weighing a thought, like a, like a physical object. I mean, who'd have thought you could weigh your thinking? Uh, the thought of it gives a whole new meaning to the word diet. Uh, I mean, I, I can see it now, Overthinkers Anonymous. <laughs> I could really go off on this one, but I'm going to choose to get back to the point. <laughs> the point is, we scientifically know more about the human mind today than any other time in the and one of the things we now know, or we know now, is that there is no difference between the brain activity in a dreamy mind while we're asleep and the brain activity of a daydreamy mind while we're awake. They are basically identical. Dreaming has the same effect on you whether you're asleep or you're awake. So what, you say? So, I mean, so, think about it. If you basically go nuts when you don't dream at night, wouldn't the same be true if you're not allowed your dreams and aspirations during the day? Is there anything we've already spoken about that would be depriving us of our dreams? The secret is now upon us. The meaning and significance of the big three unplugged dog dreams represents the culmination of a half century of research. The effect that is happening to us right now, even as... You read this, is this. 